From 1945 to 1992, the United States conducted more than 1,000 nuclear explosive tests. When President Clinton gave his support of CTBT and stockpile stewardship in August 1995, he continued the moratorium on nuclear explosive testing. Today I am announcing my decision to negotiate a true zero yield comprehensive test ban. Challenging the United States to continue its global leadership role in nuclear non-proliferation and diplomacy. And a few days before President Clinton's speech in 1995, I got a call in late afternoon from then Assistant Secretary for Defense Program Vic Rees and also Under Secretary of the Department of Energy, Charles Curtis. And they were trying to solicit my support for President Clinton's speech and the announcement. This year, the nation and the Department of Energy celebrates the 20th anniversary of that announcement and the scientific and technical capabilities that have come as a result of development to support this policy direction. The science-based stockpile stewardship program is meant to ensure that our nuclear weapons remain safe, and secure, and effective for as long as nuclear weapons exist without having to resort to explosive nuclear testing. That very fact that we have now a strong science basis to maintain the stockpile without testing provides uh, a, a direct enhancement to our deterrence of other countries because they know at the core of their being that our nuclear weapons are effective if it comes to that. And if we have to, God forbid, use nuclear weapons, they will be effective and perform as, uh, as they were designed. While to date the stockpile stewardship program has been remarkably successful in sustaining confidence in the U.S. nuclear deterrent, 20 years ago, the United States faced daunting uncertainties. To comply with the president's direction to end nuclear explosive testing, the question that stood out the most was, how could we change our nuclear weapon strategy? And what were the alternatives to maintaining our confidence in the safety, reliability, and performance of our own weapons? The thing that made the nuclear uh, establishment so powerful was a continual set of, of production of new nuclear weapons and then the testing of those nuclear weapons. That was really the key. We did over a thousand tests. We had over 70 or so different type of weapons. So that whole establishment had been basically built up based on that model of how they, their, their business model was, was working. Plus the fact that, of course, everything was pointed primarily towards the Soviet Union. Well, the Soviet Union wasn't there anymore. Uh, this whole game just all of a sudden, within a very short period, basically changed. If I go all the way back to the Manhattan Project here at Los Alamos, uh, the scientists were running calculations, even though we didn't have supercomputers like the one behind me. Um, we were doing excellent theoretical science. We were doing superb experimental science. It had been part of our process from, from the beginning, to 1995. But in 1995, we knew we were going to have to depend on the fidelity of that science at a level that went far beyond what we had ever done in the past. And we didn't know if it would work. And I distinctly remember sitting in a meeting with Vic Reese and, and having Vic ask this question, well, will this work? And uh, my memory is that George Miller stood up in the meeting and said, Vic, We'll never know whether this will work until we give it our best shot. The answer was to attain sufficient detailed scientific understanding of the nuclear explosive process, to discover, understand, and correct any anomalies that might occur during the lifetime of the stockpile weapons. It was a matter of faith, but it was in faith in those institutions and all the people that they had represented that made I think made the difference. On September 24, 1996, the United States was the first nation to sign the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty. It was really interesting to see that we had a period of, of decades, frankly, where 
the military was expressing concerns about the ability to maintain a safe, secure, reliable stockpile in the absence of testing. And it really took political leaders, both on the Hill and uh, President in the White House, President Clinton, who aspired to achieve a comprehensive test ban um, before the technical community systematically rallied to deliver the program that could help achieve that. This commitment to maintain the stockpile without testing required transitioning from underground nuclear explosive tests to understanding and being able to simulate every aspect of a nuclear weapon, from nuclear detonation to explosive yield and output. Well, the, the most impressive technological achievements are our simulation tools and our large experimental facilities like the National Ignition Facility or the Z-Machine uh, down at Sandia National Lab, where uh, you can do just some extraordinary uh, experiments and uh, recover conditions that previously were only achievable in underground nuclear tests. And uh, it's quite remarkable how using these tools uh, we can take apart all the processes uh, that go on in a nuclear weapon in minute detail. Although the United States Senate has not yet provided its consent to ratify the treaty, the nation has invested in an SSP that is at the forefront of modern science and engineering. Perhaps the single most important thing isn't a facility or a code, because so much has progressed in that area. But the single most important thing is the degree to which people at all three labs feel confident they can continue to support their assurance to the president that the stockpile is safe, secure, reliable, and fully capable of supporting the policies of this country. Since technology is only as good as the people and processes that operate them, NNSA and all of its lab partners across the DOE complex are committed to work together in advancing the human capital skills and continuing the scientific and engineering capabilities essential to protecting the United States and its allies. The ability to, um, to keep the stockpile safe, secure, and reliable is now critically dependent on our ability to model and simulate the various aspects of uh, safety, security, and aging. And right now, that's critically dependent on the, the, the science and engineering that comes out of the Stockpile Stewardship Program, which in turn is critically dependent on the people who are doing the analysis. As the United States reduces the number of nuclear weapons, the reliability of the remaining weapons in the stockpile and the quality of the facilities needed to sustain it become more important. Continuing to eliminate, reduce, and uh, bring down the numbers in our stockpile, but as the numbers get smaller, it is ever more important that the remaining nuclear weapons remain uh, safe, secure, and effective. In April 2009, during a speech in Prague, President Barack Obama outlined an ambitious agenda to achieve a global ban on nuclear explosive testing and a world without nuclear weapons. He asserted his commitment to a safe, secure, and effective nuclear deterrent for as long as nuclear weapons exist. Disarmament uh, and Global Nuclear Zero actually make the Stockpile Stewardship Program more important and more critical because as uh, the weapons go away, if they actually go away, uh, the only thing that's left is the knowledge base, and that resides in the people who compose the Stockpile Stewardship Program. So it's, it's going to be the last uh, remnant of, of uh, all that investment that occurred over uh, many decades, and so it's more important. As I look forward to the future, I don't think we're done. I think there is another 20 years of stewardship and another 20 after that.